So, ladies and gentlemen, welcome to our special video again, you know, uh, which I asked on my YouTube post that, hey, what special video can I make today? And so I'm picking the question by Ashwini Nair, who got the most likes. And they asked, what is the role of the Atmakarka Nakshatra? The role of the Atmakarka Nakshatra, because they feel like nobody has spoken about it or talked about it. I'm pretty sure somebody must have. Is this you have to look deeper? You know, if you meet some teachers, they'll explain it very well to you. But this is something, this is something I have personally gotten a lot, gotten a lot of experience with. Atmakarka Nakshatra. Okay. And before we get started, if you're new to my channel, subscribe below. And also, if you need to know where your Atmakarka is and which Nakshatra is in, check out the links here where you can find my astrological report consultations and link to my academy, Maka Vedic Astrology Academy, where I'm currently doing the unraveling of horoscope matching and how it's done. Okay. So, Atmakarka. Now, depending upon what Atmakarka you mean, and I hope you mean Chara Atmakarka, because everybody's Atmakarka is the sun, the soul significator, right? And it has a very important role. But the Chara Atmakarka is who you truly are. Who you truly are. You're getting some trains from the sun. You got to remember that. You get the train. You, you have trains of every planet, but mainly you will always get strong trains of the sun and moon. Why? Because they are your mother and father. Your genes, your attitude, uh, you know, your sanity, your level of calmness or anger all comes partially from your mother and father's DNA. But the Chara Atmakarka, movable Atmakarka, meaning the planet that holds the highest degree in your chart, closest to the 30th degree mark becomes the Atmakarka. And this excludes Rahu, Ketu, Uranus, Neptune, and Pluto. These five bodies are not considered. The only things that are considered is Sun, Moon, Mercury, Jupiter, Mars, and Saturn. Okay. So when they are closest to that 30th degree mark, that is the Atmakarka. Now, of course, there are many school of thoughts that will take Rahu as well. Hey, as long as you can get a great, excellent prediction, fine. Use it. You know, but this question was asked by me. You know, uh, so I have to go by what I have learned from my teacher. So Atmakarka is a planet, first of all. Think of the fact like, why are we born? We're born to relive our karmas, pay our karmas, live in this machine of death and rebirth and this, this karmic rejuvenation. You know, we are this transmigration of the soul that keeps repeating itself until you break those chains. That means you're born for a reason. You're not just born to just come and hang out, you know, and nothing's going to affect you. No, it's going to affect you because you wield in that process. This is why people find it hard. Why is God hitting me? Why is it that I've gotten four divorces and all of them took my money? I have nothing. I'm living in a one bedroom apartment, barely making ends meet. I can't stand God anymore. No, God has nothing to do with it. It's you. You who created those karmas from your previous life. The other people who are coming in and taking your money through marriage, perhaps simply the people who are coming and taking what you took from them in the past life. Remember that. Never feel bad about it. So, Atmakarka becomes this planet with all the goop around it. This planet that says, okay, here's everything attached to me. Like, have you seen a race car driver? And they have all of these uh, endorsements on their jackets. Jackets and pant. Just think of those endorsements as karmas attached to you. And then one by one in this life, you're peeling those things off. So Atmakarka shows the pain that one must go through, the agony one must go through, 
the suffering must must go through to pay off whatever is given to you from your collection of many lives so it's not just one previous life it's many lives combined together and put it together along with your vasna samskars that is what the atmakarka is now the nakshatra reveals the details of how that planet is going to burn think of and you can definitely zodiac signs are very important never ignore that nakshatra is their ignition of the gas it's it's actually the one that is like heating that atma karka out or atma karka up it's heating it up it's showing this is how things are going to be revealed this is how you're going to be paying this burden off of your soul so atma karka nakshatra you can never say oh, it's all going to be good 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 atma karka nakshatra you know will do good based on the karma but it also has things to burn so if for example sun is in the purva bhadrapada nakshatra okay you will see such people will have strong karmas to pay to children children of the world not just their own children children of the world they will feel that frustration and agony in the world when there is mistreatment of the children there's very strong things with that theme the other thing the person finds it frustrating to understand their path in life with purva bhadrapada and especially the sun in purva bhadrapada shows because purva bhadrapada is about this burning of this i believe it's either a lighthouse or a building just imagine that like burning down crumbling down so what the purva bhadrapada shows is that until this person you know has come down from their throne only then does the ignition of the spiritual life will begin because bhadrapada is start of that kundalini experience and you can't have that being in your magical place and burning it down meaning either complete detachment from it even if you're living in a palace or it burns it down where you don't get to deal with those things you know like for example tomorrow if you were to wake up without any relations without any home any wealth nothing attached to your name in a way it's kind of a exhilarating experience that you are now free okay so here that bhadrapada lesson comes in through those particular experiences for the soul and of course you will see the the it's not the negative part it's just that karmic uh the tying of the karmic knot these people will get involved in activism politics a lot so again that entanglement is there if for example sun goes into you know let's say any of the like the felgunis it goes into purva felguni uttra felguni well the mess that is around that will be revealed through bed pleasures lust sexual lust sexual pleasures it also comes to a point where they're always fighting to wanting to be on a platform so they can be appreciated but again atma karka could be anything remember that maybe sun is your atma karka which means there will be a lot of those things paying off through the father an authoritative figure if moon then it'll be tied to the mother if mercury ants and relatives if mars brothers and sisters if jupiter 
gurus and teachers. If Saturn, public itself, public in general, serving the public, because Saturn is a servant. Venus, your spouse. So depending upon the significance, the, the family significance that the planet represent naturally, there will be a strong, those, those things that you're taking off, right? Those endorsements, there'll be a strong thing related to them you have to pay. It doesn't even matter if it's exalted or debilitated or neutral or enemy. It is going to be paying those things off. So, but, but again, th these things can go into a lot of depth. Like if you really want to know the extended story, then look at the Padha. Which Padha it's in. And how it's going to be revealing itself. For example, well, I don't know if I should give this example. Let's say seventh Lord is in the fifth house. Okay. Seventh Lord is in the fifth house. And let's say it's in Ashwini Nakshatra. And it's in the third Padha of Ashwini Nakshatra. And in the Navamsha, it's in 12th house. Because depending upon the timing and what the ascendant is of the Navamsha, the D9 chart, it's in the 12th house. It's being aspected by Malefic. What it shows, especially in a certain time period, your studies will be affected because of your infatuation with somebody from a foreign place who's going to be older in age with you, mature in age with you. Let's say Saturn was looking mature in age with you. And that can disturb, you know, your either education, your intelligence, your ability to make decisions. Because you want that now. Because Moon is in Ashwini, third pada, you want that particular person now and your focus is now completely lost. You're all over the place. You're running all over the place. So this is how the story will reveal itself. Why that, that disturbance is coming because moon is the Atmakarka as your seventh lord in the fifth house. Okay. So seventh house is marriage, relationships. Fifth house is romance, naturally. Okay. And it's sitting in the twelfth house in Gemini because it's in the third pada of Ashwini. Saturn looks at it. Saturn also becomes the seventh lord. So you will make some very quick decision related to romance and relationship, which is going to bring you agony and depression. And that is one of those patches coming off. One of those patches coming off. Because if, let's say, many, many patches can be revealed during that time. Why? Because we're not just... We don't want to just study things from one location, like, well, fifth floor, seventh floor in the fifth house, it's sitting in the twelfth house, aspect by Saturn, because in that time period, from the moon itself, what is happening? From that period, perhaps there will be some issues with the father will occur, because if, let's say, you're running through that moon, dasha, moon sub period, it's going to be ninth from your father, ninth from the ninth house. Or let's say how you're dealing with the bosses during that time. Well, moon is in the 8th from the 10th house. So how does the, the things will unravel with your bosses? It'll be very stressful dealing with them. Because 10th Lord is in 8th from itself, but it's in the 12th house in Navamsha with aspect of Saturn. And so you will make hasty decisions. You will do a lot of cutting and pasting to get your work done. You'll be caught, you'll get into a trouble. That you're doing half-assed work. So this is, and then and of course, Ashwini will reveal even more things, you know, depending upon the situation of the planet. 
and especially in Ashwini Nakshatra. A lot of, yeah, definitely a lot of other things I can explain, but I'd rather do that on a privately to someone if they have to know, you know. But yeah, this is uh, based on the Atmakarka we're looking at is going to do that. And especially their lordship comes into play. What is their lordship? You know, perhaps let's say your Mercury is your Atmakarka, right? It's sitting in Kritika Nakshatra in the sixth house. So it's Taurus. Okay. Mars from the 11th house is looking at Mercury with its eighth aspect. So here what it shows me, one of your biggest karmas as an Atma Karka to be played. And especially with Mercury, we have to look. Is it retrograde? Is it combust or not? Either you will have fight with your one of your aunts regarding children. Okay. You will have a big fight with your one of your aunts, even uncles, regarding your children. Or they will may even reveal the secret of the fact that you could be having a child without telling anyone, perhaps even before marriage. Especially if let's say Mercury is retrograde. And that will create a break. That will create a break within your family, with your career. Fights and arguments with the spouse will happen. Okay, spouse with the spouse will happen due to your aunts. So look, look how many things are coming out and revealing themselves with your Atma Karka. On the other hand, you could be very competitive. All the Mercury is not a very competitive planet, but because of Mars's aspect being there, you're ready to go to war then. Because Mercury is a type of planet like Moon who actually runs away from conflict. It doesn't want to deal with conflict. But wherever Mercury is sitting, whoever's aspects and conjunction it receives, in a way it's kind of like a luminaries or, or I'm sorry, like uh, the shadowy planets, Rahu and Ketu. It'll behave like them. So here Mars's aspect shows you ready to do battle. You will win over, you know, in competitive places, including, let's say, even competitive exams. You know, um, because Mercury does well in its natural state of the sixth house. But it's that aspect of Mars that brings all these things into play. On the other hand, you know, if let's say Jupiter was to look at this particular Mercury, okay, let's say from the second house, second house of money, it'll show you can receive money from one of your uh, maternal aunts or uncles. But that receiving of that money, okay, will either create some kind of a dispute within the work or with the spouse. Or at the same time, you will take that money with that money. You will win over some debt or enemy. Depending upon how that Mercury is placed in Navamsha. You know, and it's including depending upon the Padha. So there's always good and bad mix. Sometimes there's more bad than good. You know, so this is why Atma Karka reveals what is it that the soul has to burn. Okay, what the soul has to burn. Because when it comes to who you are, Atma Karka is part of the puzzle that reveals who you are as an individual, what you are going to be like. But the thing is, you're going to be different things, like literally in a single day your personality could change eight times you will see the the hora that is running at a particular hour you will actually behave like that particular planet in your birth chart how it's placed perhaps you're no longer thinking about lust and sex anymore now you're just wanting to read let's say some astrology book or wanting to go into meditation and do meditation 
you're no longer that person you were maybe an hour ago. And the dasha itself will change who you are as a person. So it's not just personality. This is more important. And it is important. That's why I'm discussing it. Because it reveals what type of how the karma is needs to be burned out. Okay, sometimes it's really terrible. Sometimes it's neutral. Sometimes it's excellent with somewhat of, you know, misfortunes mixed in. Okay. So anyway, guys, uh, hopefully uh, this has given some understanding of what Atmakarka planet is and why it exists in life. Okay. But, and again, like I said, you can do many, many things. Like if you use, let's say, Jaimini system, Atma Karka timing will be the timing for fame. Timing for recognition, timing for focusing on one's health, because it's the significant of the first house in Jaimini astrology. Okay. So anyway, guys, if you're new to my channel, subscribe below so you don't miss these type of videos. If you want to know where your uh, Atma Karka is placed in your chart, along with all your social details, check out the links here. Otherwise, we'll see you later. And today I'm going to be putting... Uh, the Cancer Ascendant chart on horoscope matching on Kiris Vlogs. Bye-bye.